and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus the Christ. This is the day that the Lord hath made and we are commanded to rejoice and be glad. In it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. The Lord has allowed us to connect together one more time. And I want to tell you that all is well and it will be all right. I want you to type that in the comments for me, please. Let's get that in the atmosphere. All is well, and it will be all right. We thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to connect with us tonight. We welcome you into the sacred place that we call sanctuary where God is exalted, the devil is defeated, and we have the victory. This is our Wednesday night recharge as we take a pit stop to get into the word of God. Everything is going down but the word of God. I want to thank you so much for your encouraging words, your prayers, your support, whatever it is that you're doing to help us and encourage us in times like these. I believe, I believe in the power of prayer. That prayer changes everything. Glory be to God. And I'm going to pray for you as you pray for me because we love you. Just in case you hadn't heard it, we love you and we need you to survive. So would you put your name or anyone's name that you know who is standing in the need of prayer? We're going to connect. My faith connects to your faith and whatever it is that we need from the Lord. We're believing and trusting God that he will, he will do just what he said. Glory. God is good all the time and all the time he is good for your goodness and your mercy towards us. We offer praise. Hallelujah. Praise is what we do. Praise is always something that you can do to show God how much you love him, how much you need him, how much you appreciate him everything that he has done for you. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. Tonight I want to talk about it is time for us to make sure that we tap into the glory of God. I want you to type that please. Tap into the glory of God. I want you to hit the like button. I want you to hit the share button. I want you to hit those hearts. Let us know that you're here with us this evening for our Bible study. So tap into the glory of God. The glory of God isn't just a feeling. And it's not an event or it is not some type of Old Testament experience. It is a spiritual, what I want to call a spiritual tsunami of everything that is contained in the character of God. So the word glory, glory, is literally translated as a heavy weight, meaning the heaviest, the, the biggest, the grandest thing about our God. And it has been called the manifestation of the presence of God. But more than his presence, it is power. It's power. I want you to type that, please. Glory is power. It is power, the kind of power that resurrects. It is the kind of power that delivers. It is the kind of power that overcomes. It is the kind of power that transforms. It is greater and stronger than any other power in existence. And the good news, it belongs to us. And yes, maybe you feel like the glory of God is untouchable. It is unreachable. Maybe, just maybe you think of the manifestation of the glory of God as something reserved 
for special church services or an extraordinary circumstance. But all the while, you long to see the power of God manifested in your own life. And I want you to know, be encouraged that the glory of God is available to us 24 seven. It is built in. And that's how God has designed it. It is how he designed us because we were born of God. And that glory is inside of you right now. All things that the Father has, including his glory, belongs to us. And what does it mean? It means that his glory isn't too far out of reach. It is right within our grasp. So I want to talk about how do we tap into this glory? So the first thing is you must look for the glory. I want you to type that, please. Look for the glory. Acts chapter 7, verse 55 says, But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God. And if we are not expecting to see the glory of God, we probably won't. And so just like anything else in the kingdom of God, it takes faith to see a manifestation. And I want you to type that, please. It takes faith to see a manifestation. So we have the glory of God. It is a visible power. And in the Old Testament, the glory appeared as a cloud, smoke, or fire. And this visible power is also known as Shekinah glory, which is the presence of God dwelling in the earth realm. And so the question becomes, can we see this same physical glory today? And the answer is yes, we can see this glory. It is tangible and it is powerful. So start expecting to see the glory of the Lord. Are you expecting glory? Hallelujah. I want you to type that, please. I'm expecting to see glory. Yes, Lord. The second thing I want to tell you is that you must pray for the glory. Write that down, please, in your notes. Pray for the glory. Romans 8 and 18 says, For I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And how do you pray for the glory of God. Someone is wondering. So the first thing you must do, you got to pray that the glory will be revealed to you and in you. Let me say it again. You must pray that the glory be revealed to you and in you. So we can see and experience the glory of God, but we must diligently ask and seek for his glory to be revealed. And so when we pray the glory into the earth, miracles, signs, and wonders will occur. Yes, in the church and in our own personal lives. And I want you to remind, be reminded that when Moses saw the glory of God, he asked, he asked the question, Exodus 33 and 18. He says, please show me your glory. My, my, my. I want you to type that, please. Show me your glory, exclamation points. Show me your glory. And so when believers gathered in the spirit of unity, seeking the Lord, the glory appeared in the upper room at the day of Pentecost. And the Bible says that it sat on everyone that was there. That's Acts chapter 2. And so each one of us who are born again believers, we have the ability to manifest God's glory here on earth, but we must believe when we pray. And I want you to type that, please. We must believe when we pray. Yes, that's why Jesus told Martha that if she would believe, 
John chapter 11. If she would believe, she would see the glory of God. And we must pray Ephesians 1, 17 through 18. We got to pray that we would know the hope of his calling, which is the hope of his glory. We got to pray that we're going to understand the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, which when we inherited from him, when we inherited this glory, glory was deposited in us. But we got to receive the revelation of what it means to walk in that glory. Hallelujah. You got to pray for the glory. Number three, you must prepare for the glory. Romans 5 and 5 gives us this. The love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. And so don't you know that there are degrees of the glory? So if you want to experience the fullness of the glory of God, you must prepare your spirit. I want to say that to somebody watching me right now. Get ready. Prepare your spirit. How? How do I do this, preacher? Well, by walking in love. I want you to type that, please. Walk in love. We must walk in love. It takes faith. It takes faith to receive and operate in the glory. And faith works by love. And that means the glory of God will increase in you in direct proportion to how we walk in love. And so to increase the amount of glory in your life, you got to walk in love. What are you saying? I'm saying more love, more glory. I want you to type that, please. More love, more glory. And so the spirit of strife and division, it's always somewhere lurking and looking for an opening and a way into all of our lives. So you got to never Never, ever let your love guard down. Hallelujah. I want to tell somebody that. Please, ma'am, please, sir, don't let your love guard down. And so then we are on our way to being filled with his glory. So the fourth thing I want to tell you about the glory, we must walk in the glory. I want you to type that, please. Number four, walk in the glory. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse 18. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are going from glory to glory. I want somebody to type that, please. Say we are going from glory to to glory. So the glory of God, it looks for a dwelling place. 1 Corinthians 3 and 16 says, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? And so we are God's house, his temple. And only this temple is no longer in a fixed location. This house can, can walk and, and talk and share the gospel. And now it's one thing to have the glory, but it's another thing to know how to walk in the glory. And the good news is we have everything we need inside of us to walk in glory. And so when the believers experienced the glory of God at Pentecost, they didn't just go back to living normal lives. They emerge from that place as separate from the rest of the world and as a light in the midst of darkness. And when they got the glory, then they went out and started to turn the world upside down for Jesus. My, my, my. Yes, Lord, I'm still telling you that Jesus is still the answer. They begin to tell everybody about Jesus. Have you told anybody about Jesus? You got to tell the world. You got to tell the world about our Jesus. They preached the gospel 
and they work miracle signs and wonders. And the Lord, the Bible lets us know the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. And that's the glory that we need to operate in right now. Hallelujah. And so when you walk in the glory of God, you have a fire in you that the enemy cannot withstand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we are told to put on the armor of God, which includes the shoes of the glorious gospel of peace. And there's glory in your feet. My, my, my. I want to tell you that again. I said it's glory in your feet. Feet. I want you to type that, please. There is glory in my feet. What are you saying, Pastor? Yes, it's glory in your feet. That's what gives us the power to walk on top of the enemy's head. That's why the only thing that the enemy is to us, to the church, is a footstool. Why? Because there is glory. It's glory. Somebody ought to stomp your feet where you are. There is glory in your feet. My, my, my. That's why we dance so much, because there's glory in our feet. Don't ever judge a person's praise because you have no idea what they have been through that, or what they're going through right now. It's glory in my feet. So even now, my friends, let us start to imply these things. Let us apply these to our life. Let us start to operate into this thing that we can tap into God's glory. Why? By, by looking, by praying, by preparing, and by walking. And watch the glory of God be revealed in you. Don't live without the understanding of God's glory and what it means in our lives. So we got to start by faith right now. We have to declare by faith right now. What am I declaring? Listen to what I'm going to tell you. You got to declare this by faith right now. The glory is in me. I receive it and I'm walking in it. Come on, say that out loud. The glory is in me. I receive it and I'm walking in it. I want you to type that, please. The glory is in me. I receive it, and I'm walking in it. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, please show us your glory. Show us your glory through your word and help us to reflect this glory to the world. Let us be like Moses who did not know that his face shone, but let us live in your presence and radiate your presence to the world. Consume us, God, with the desire to see you glorified in our lives. Show us your mighty glory. Oh, God, please show us your glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and thank God. Hallelujah. God is going to show us his glory. And that's why we always encourage you at the end of whatever service we're having to let the glory of the Lord, that's what we're talking about, be revealed in you. That is always our humble prayer. We pray that something was said to help you on this journey that we call life. Yes, there are many things that are going on in this world and we need God's glory to rest in our lives. Don't you need his glory? Don't you want his glory? Hallelujah. It's in me. I receive it and I am walking in it right now. We want to invite you to join us on this platform, 11 a.m. Sunday morning. Also go to our YouTube channel, Vision Selah Church and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on Instagram as well, Vision Selah Church. Go to these platforms so that you can stay connected to us and the things that we are doing in this part of the kingdom. We invite you to come on and join us. This is a Psalm 150 church. Everything that has breath, praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Remember, it's glory 
in your feet. Somebody should have been stomping right there. I said, it's glory in your feet. We ask that you continue to pray for us as we pray for you. It is our humble prayer that the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent one from another. It is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others. He will surely do the same for you. Have faith in God. Now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think or even imagine according to the power that worketh in us. And if the Lord delays his coming, we want to see you real soon. But until that time, remember what has been said tonight. Let the glory of the Lord be revealed in you. It is our humble prayer in Jesus' name.